Вообичайно моите обратяния ги започнувам с сбора за доволство и чест. Меѓу тоа денес, тоа што собранието, Домот на граѓаните на Прекасеја на Македонија е домачин на изложбата за сетјавање на жртвите од Гладоморот во Украина. Украина се сетјава, светот признава. За мене представува настан кој што во исто време предизвиква гордост и неизмерна тага. Дозволете, покрај тоа што ви посакувам добре дојде од име на претедниците на Собранијето и во мое лично име, да упатам до вас и апел за разбирање, затоа што сум убеден дека после ова никој нема да остане равнодушен кон оваа човечка трагедија и кон овој период во кој се изгубила и најмалата допирна точка со тоа што значи да се биде човек. Што значи да се сак, цени и вреднува човечкиот живот, сече и живот, затоа што нема помалку или повеќе вредни човечки суштества. Нема повеќе или помалку важни човечки животи. Има добри и има лоши луѓе. Во принцип, секога ше потежок патот што го поминува борбата на доброто против злото. Но тоа што не разликува и ни дава сила да истраеме на тој трнови пат е цврстата воља, верба и надеж дека сме извлекле поука од минатото и сме се бореле на сите можни начини да не се повторат тие грешки и воиднина. Мислата дека сме придонеле кон промена на дискурсот и токму ние сме биле променат, без двоумени. За жал, историјата се повторува пак. Сега се други средствата, меѓутоа во принцип, намерата е иста и таа не е воопшто хумана. Да се покори на сите можни начини Украина и украинците, а и агресорот е ист. Што е уште понелогично, се работи за земја членка на Совета за безбедност, која што е еден од шесте тела на Обединетите нации и е конкретно задолжен за обезбедување на светскиот мир и безбедност. Почитувани присутни, на светот му треба цели 90 години да признае на ниво на влади или парламенти во голем број на држави од демократскиот свет дека гладоморот е акт на геноцид, а европскиот парламент на 23 октомври 2008 година у свој резолуција со која се признава гладоморот како злостоство против човештвото. Тоа не е доволно. Злосторство или геноцид, тоа мора да се именува и да се викне толку гласно, за да одекне и остави белек во сечи ум и разум, во сечија совест и одговорност, дека се посегнува по највредното, по најскапоценото, т.е. по животот, на деца, жени, стари и млади, без разлик, со сите однапред испланирани и спроведени систематски начини на истребување на еден народ и една држава. Толку системски, што дури не се знае ниту точната бројка на жртви, која според различни извори се движи од 4 до 15 милиони жртви. Тоа не се зрна песок, тоа се живи се места, широки насмевки, успеси за солзи, тоа се човечки судбини. Почитувани присутни, да не дозволиме да се претвори се во пепел. Премногу сме вложили и сме жртвували ние, нашите предци, нивните предци. Да не дозволиме злото да затропа и на наша врата, затоа што на овој или на оној начин ефектот се рефлектира на сиот свет без разлика. Ви благодарам на вниманието. of North Macedonia, Ms. Larissa Dir, to address you with a speech. Thank you. Honorable President of the Assembly of the Republic of North Macedonia, Mr. Tolot Jaferi, I appreciate your speech very much. Esteemed members of Parliament and Government, Your Excellencies, dear guests, I would like to thank you for finding the time and opportunity to come to the opening of the exhibition Ukraine Remembers the World Acknowledges 
which is dedicated to commemorating the victims of the Holodomor of 1932-1933 in Ukraine, which takes place in Ukraine and around the world on the 4th of Saturday of November, these times on the 26th of November. The Holodomor is the genocide of Ukrainian people which was caused by the deliberately organized actions of the Stalinist communist leadership in order to create an artificial famine in 1932-1933 in Ukraine as a result of which millions and millions of people died. The Holodomor in Ukraine, in its essence, was both a tool and a mechanism aimed at extermination of the Ukrainian nation. The Holodomor in Ukraine is part of the implemented bloody coercion of the Soviet Stalinist regime. One of the first to understand the systematic nature of the extermination of the Ukrainian nation was the world-famous lawyer Rafael Lemkin, who clearly distinguished the stages of such extermination. The first, from 1920 to 1926, murder and imprisonment of Ukrainian political figures, writers, artists, teachers, the second, liquidation of the Ukrainian Autocephalus Orthodox Church, priests and high clergy were killed or tortured, the third, starvation of peasants, the weapon which was used against them, hunger and force. The ethnic unity was destroyed by way of forcibly deporting Ukrainians. According to the second article of the Convention on the Punishment, Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, genocide means any acts committed with the intent to destroy, in whole or in part, any national, ethnical, racial or religious group as such. In order for a criminal act to qualify as genocide, it's necessary to prove the presence of special intention on the part of the subject of the crime. The intention, that is, the criminal goal in this case, is the extermination of Ukrainians, which was realized by criminal actions, violent collectivization, maintaining blackboards, entering into the register those who did not hand in the bread, termination of any trade, fines in the form of food, taking away products as well as seeds in a violent way, confiscation of all property, Stalinist camps, shootings. Robert Conquex wrote in his book The Harvest of Sorrow, that the Ukrainian peasants suffered twice, both as a peasant and as the Ukrainian. In January 2010, the Court of Appeal of the city of Kyiv issued a ruling in a criminal case based on the fact of the crime of genocide committed in Ukraine during the years 1932-1933, that is, the legal basis exists. Moreover, on the 19th of April 1988, the report of the U.S. Congress Special Commission on the Ukrainian Famine, headed by Dr. James Mays, was published. One of its conclusions stated that Joseph Stalin and those around him committed genocide against Ukrainians in 1932-1933. In one of his speeches, Mays said, in order to centralize the power in the hands of Stalin, what was needed was to destroy the Ukrainian peasant, the Ukrainian intellectuals, the Ukrainian language, Ukrainians' understanding of their history, and to destroy Ukraine as such. This way simply calculated and primitive. No people, as a result, no country and the result, no problem. 
James Mays noted that generations of Ukrainians will live, in fact, with the collective psychological trauma, a traumatized post-genocide society. Post-genocide society, obviously. It was so until the 24th of February 2022, when the world learned about the mass barrels of Ukrainians which were tortured by Russians. Ninety years have passed since the Holodomor genocide. But now, Irpin, Bucha, Leman, Mariupol, these are all separate symbols of the genocide committed by a permanent member of the UN Security Council, the Russian Federation. Committing genocide in Ukraine, the Russian Federation, a member of the UN Security Council, exterminate the civilian population of Ukraine, killing, torching, causing severe bodily harm, forcibly transferring children to the Russian Federation, deliberately destroys housing, hospitals, schools, civilian energy infrastructure in the pre-winter period. The genocide continues precisely because the previous genocide was not punished. We are indebted to their brave English and American journalist Gary Jones, Malcolm Megarach, William Henry Chamberlain, who at risk of losing their own lives broke through the iron ban and reported the truth about the Holodomor of 1932-1933 in Ukraine. Only gradually, over time, we began to learn the truth about the Holodomor crime. Now, multiple sources show us the crime that the Russian army committed in Ukraine almost in real time. Ukraine appealed to the countries to support the creation of a special international tribunal in order to investigate the crimes and punish the criminals which terrorized, torture and kill our people. A number of states supported this initiative. Our parliament, the Verkhovna Rada, appealed to foreign parliaments and governments to recognize the crime that the Russian Federation is currently committing on the territory of Ukraine as genocide of the Ukrainian nation. Ukraine also appeals for recognition of the Holodomor in 1932-1933 in Ukraine as a genocide of the Ukrainian people. Recognition would be an incredibly strong support. It would be spiritual strength to those who are on the front line fighting to the right to live. Thank you very much for your attention and your support means a lot to us. Thank you.